Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name's Peter Thompson. I'm here today to uh, interview Eric Tweedo, one of the, the true legends of uh, Parramatta rugby and a true gentleman. And uh, we're just going to ask him a little bit about his life and his journey through rugby and what he's been up to over the last 92 years of being young. And I guess the first question is that you, you've documented a lot of your life, uh, Eric, in uh, the, the tale of an old wallaby, and, and I see that you were born in the United yes. Kingdom. You're not even Australian. <laughs> Hopefully you are an Australian. But can you, tell oh, sure. little, can you tell us a little about your journey and how yeah. you started to play rugby and how well, you went from to England to here? That takes in 90 odd years. But I'll do my best and start off by saying, yes, I was born in England. I was born in a place called Rochdale in Lancashire. My father had just served in the First World War uh, and he decided, and, and of course my mother, decided to migrate to Australia as 10 quid poms uh, in 1924. I was born in, in 1921 and I was three year old when I left England uh, to, to come to Australia. Uh, we landed in, uh, in Australia, in Sydney, 1924. And we finished up buying a house in Maryland shortly afterwards and I spent all, all of my younger days in Maryland. So, we're, so what school did you go to? I went to a GPS school, Guildford Public School. Okay. GPS. <laughs> and what high school then? Is that what you do higher education? I, well, I, I did my last years at Parramatta, Parramatta Intermediate High School. That is now uh, Peter Phillip. Uh, no. Arthur Phillip. Arthur Phillip High School. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I just thought there might have been a connection with the rugby there too with Parramatta High School, but okay. Yeah. Uh, no, there was no, they, they played uh, rugby league at Parramatta Intermediate High. I played a few games there, but that was the only game, organised game of rugby I played until when I was 15 years old. Uh, an ugly, crusty old character came up to me one day and he said, you look like you... you you, you played a bit of rugby. And I said, no, wh wh why do you ask me? He said, well, my name's Bill Cerati. Now, I live with, just up the road here. Uh, well, what I want to ask you is, how much rugby union have you played? Now, you're going to tell me that you didn't play me. I said, Mr. Cerati, I, 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 I've never even heard, I've just heard of I didn't know that the man I was talking to was a legend in rugby union. He played more tests than any other rugby union forward. Probably a legend in his own day. Bill Cerati. And still is. is. Still, the, people still talk about Bill Cerati, even though he's been there then to 50 years. But uh, So he took me over to, uh, to uh, a Cumberland Oval the next night. Taking into consideration, I'm only 15. I so there's no I, junior football, so this is... So no junior football. At 15 right. you went straight into senior no, football. That's right, right. yeah. Oh. So, uh, so I, I spent the first year playing with the Widden Cup. The second year, when I had just turned 16, I was playing second grade. And before that season was out, I played my first first grade game. Your first first no, grade game for, for, for Parramatta. Yeah. So who not was back in nineteen thirty eight. Nineteen thirty eight. So who was that against? And you, you played. Yeah, pop, you played. Well, it was a, it was against Dremoyne, and I went on as a replacement. But I did take the field as a first as a as a, as a in first grade that year when I was I was sixteen. Oh, no, and, I'm sorry. I was just turned seventeen. And. Did they introduce you to the hard lines in those days? Was it violent or was it, you know, did they say, there's a young kid and then do you over or, you know, uh, or did you make it through? Well, I, I came through it anyway, mate. I don't think I got too many broken noses or cauliflower ears out of it. But it, it, was, a, it was quite an So experience. that was in front row when you played that? No, I was playing second, second row. row. Yeah. So it's still in the tight five. Yeah, in the, in the uh, 
1939, I, uh, I became a, a uh, permanent first first grader. The following year, uh, I got into the only representative game that was played in 1940, taking into consideration the war had just started. And uh, as a 19-year-old kid, I made it into the combined metropolitan team, which played a match against combined uh, combined forces. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so, uh, so was there Sydney then? So that combined team, there was no Sydney, was that the Sydney level? Was there a you know, Sydney? A well, that, the, the, the competition was basically the same as what it is now, but uh, there was only 10 teams. Uh, Parramatta Club was introduced into first, back into first grade in 1934, and Bill Cerati was the, the captain of the Parramatta, and uh, I joined three years later in 1937 as a kid. So in 1940, with the war, was that all, all the competition then suspended? Yes, and, well... And you got drafted to, into the Navy then, or...? I didn't get drafted into the Navy, I volunteered. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, when the war, when the war started, the, the, the rugby union continued their first grade competition right through the war, but there was no representative games played from 1940, and that, that was a minor representative game, really, until 19... 1945, right at the end, after the war had finished, they, they got a team together and they said they got to Queensland. But really, the interstate and international, uh, there was no interstate or international games played between 1939 and 1946. Okay. So I was, before the war, I'd just coming up into the representative got matches when all of a sudden, at 19 years old, I, they all stop and I come back into, into it after the war finished in 1946. So I lost six of my best years uh, sailing around the seas in the Navy. Okay, so that, there was no, like today, they don't have Navy rugby teams or things like that, but if it's just through the war, you wouldn't do anything like that at all, would you? Oh, I, well, you had, you had you were with you in the army, navy, or air force. It was always as a uh, as a sport that it was played. Ken Carney, for instance, left Parramatta High School in nineteen forty one, I think it was, and went straight into the air force from school, and uh, and spent uh, a couple of years after the war uh, over in in, in, in Europe. Not, not contributing much to the, the war effort, but played football. Okay. So then, after you came back in '46, you took up rugby again. Oh yes, yeah, so and, and, yeah. and and then you had to get a job and all those type of things. You were based in Parramatta, or no? Well, I was working for the Shell Company, and uh, the Shell Company were very generous because most of their male staff, of recruitable age, was in, it was in the forces in some shape or form. And so it was just a matter of, of being discharged from the Navy in, in the early 46 and uh, returning to civilian life, as normal, you might say. And uh, I was rather fortunate. I, I, my naval service towards the end of the war was from Sydney. That's what Parramatta made the first great grandfather back in 1945, playing against university. We got beat, but we put up a pretty good show. Um, so was Ken Kearney in that team too? Or? No, Ken didn't didn't come into grade football until 1946. Yeah. And um, with Lenny Wolf, the other front row forward, Parramatta had the first New South Wales front row, who, which represented New South Wales as a unit. There was, there so, were you a loose head prop or a tight head? Or can you play both sides? Oh, uh, yeah, whichever whichever side I, I was on, I took. <laughs> no, we, we didn't specialise as they do today. 
No, he, he, even when I, I played for Australia, the, 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 the coach said, put the first scrum down. And there was two front, two, the two props would both have liked to be loose head props. <laughs> but we sorted it all out, Peter. We sorted it.